I am your uncle. I have known you since you were a kid, Ricky. Ever since you were seven and eight years old, you've shown superhuman strength. Welcome to Second Class Cinema, the show where we watch a B-movie and then immediately discuss. I'm Tom Ribeiro. I'm here with Brittany, Eric, and Dennis. Today we watched 1991's Riccio, the story of Ricky. And uh, this was uh, Eric's selection. Why don't you tell us why you selected this movie? All right. Well, uh, first of all, it's one of my favorite B-movies of all time. Uh, I absolutely love this movie. Um, second, I know Dennis has not seen this movie, and I thought it would be right up his alley. Um, oh, yeah. It's a complete, like, it's a kung fu movie crossed with, like, a Peter Jackson gore flick, and it does everything right. Like, it's it's entertaining all the way through. Never gets boring at any point. I was like, okay, this is going to be great. Everyone's going to enjoy the hell out of this. We're going to have a great time. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, Dennis, why don't you give us the breakdown since you haven't actually seen it? Oh, my God. What wasn't this movie about? (laughs) Uh, So Ricky is just this powerhouse of a kung fu wizard. (laughs) And he goes to this high high tech prison in in 2001. Yes, in the future. In the the future in 2001. (laughs) And he, uh, I don't know why he's there for manslaughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, he kind of runs afoul of this gang of higher up prisoners. Yes. Okay, yeah. Who were, uh, I guess, in with the guards somehow. And then he manages to fight, I guess, a, a sub-guard or a sub-prisoner. There's it's a lot of gore <laughs> and a lot of fights. <laughs> <laughs> I just know at one point he was so fighting a guy with blood. tattoos. So, And then it just escalates from there. All right, so. Actually, not bad. You kind of got the most of it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty good. I know it was... I, I didn't know why Riccio was there at first. I knew he was there for manslaughter, but it seemed like he was there for a deeper meaning. Mm. Like, I have to avenge someone. Yeah, yeah, I felt like he was punishing himself for a little it bit. Was there. that it? Okay. Maybe. I mean, that, I mean, that's what I was felt for a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, he was staying within those walls because he chose to. Right. Because, this. well, not to, you know, spoil alert, you know, he could leave whenever he wanted to, really. True. Um, so I wonder if there is maybe something, because I, I don't know if we mentioned, uh, this is an adaptation of um, of a Japanese comic book. Oh, yeah. you're telling me that, yeah. So maybe there was some subtext lost there, but who cares because this movie's great <laughs> and there's no way the comic book is nearly as good. <laughs> there, this was the most torso punching I've ever seen <laughs> in a movie. There were so many fists going through yes. chests, bellies. Fist and impalements fist <laughs> at every turn. <laughs> Everybody's getting their eyeballs smashed out. Oh, there's so much eyeball pain in this movie. Oh my god! Really? Yeah, that was a lot. Oh yeah. For Has someone, someone I disturbed. Head exploding, clapping between somebody's hands. <laughs> oh. Head explosion, uh, slap in the back of the head, and your eyeball pops out. <laughs> punched in the stomach, it. and it just <laughs> eviscerates you. Oh, it was beautiful. But that's the thing. It like, it's funny that you say that. It stays still very slapstick because the effects aren't good enough Absolutely. to really make you feel uncomfortable but it's still good enough to be really funny when you describe it as a peter jackson gore flick it does like i, I said that during the final sequence it's got that dead alive like holy shit yeah <laughs> they definitely. just keep topping themselves with guts and, and excessive amounts of blood squirting meat and blood <laughs> even the steaks were just full of molasses blood <laughs> can we talk about the uh, he's probably my favorite character the assistant Warden, <laughs> assistant warden Dan. <laughs> assistant was that his name? I think his name's Dan. Yeah. Oh my god, he, he is a Dan. <laughs> Dan the Hookman. Oh jeez. With an eyeball full of mint. <laughs> <laughs> they regenerated. I don't know. Well, maybe he put them back, no. but I don't know if it was. Well, no, because some days the lints are lousy. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. They, they're lousy sometimes. <laughs> the mints are sour today. <laughs> he refills his eye mints every day. <laughs> some days he gets a bad bad, bad patch. <laughs> you know, sometimes you get a bad. Man. <laughs> I've never had a bad mint unless it's been in an eyeball. <laughs> Just to paint the picture, he has a hook for a hand uh-huh. and a fake eye that he pops out of his head and opens and eats mints out of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not we're not calling him. Eye Just mints. in case you thought you were lost, no, <laughs> you are totally on track. <laughs> Followed perfectly. So uh, the the gore and everything led to the successes. Uh, of this movie, what what are some of the things that we we enjoyed about it besides the gore? The English dub, yes, uh, yes. yes. Oh my god, I, I couldn't, so good. I couldn't tell if they were going for something comedic, but it was very. 
1940s kind of vaudevillian. Uh, well, the acting was, but then the voice acting was. Hey, hey well, get over here! Yeah. <laughs> Mark, come here! I'm gonna hit you on the head now. Yeah. yeah, like I'm pretty sure I heard a Jimmy Stewart somewhere in there. <laughs> I heard like a George Harrison. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Everybody sounded like a, a, the golden age of a Hollywood actor. Oh, beautiful! It's I'm usually a purist when it comes to um, like foreign, you know. Movies, I, I like them to have their, their original language, but this is one I have to watch the dub. Oh, it's, it's so much better with the dub. It's perfect. So many words for bastard. <laughs> so, yeah, everyone so is many. a bastard in this movie. This, that's what this movie should have been called. Here come the bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky O. Yeah, this movie succeeds in the gore and on the dub. I mean, if we want to talk about failures, uh, the choreography isn't very good. Like I, most kung fu movies are way better I, than this. Yeah, actually, that's uh, yeah. a really good point. You know, yeah, for a kung fu movie, I, the kung fu's bad. <laughs> yeah, there was just a lot of like quick zooms on Ricky flying through the air, and yeah, I, I think of that scene when he's punching in the rain, <laughs> <laughs> when he's just having a hissy fit in the yeah, rain. He's just kind of flailing. <laughs> well, most of the fights last like one punch, yeah. and then exactly. the person's dead. So yeah, that's true. So even calling this a kung fu movie is kind of stretching it a little bit. Yeah, they it's just get pulverized yeah. with the first. <laughs> Uh, and then it's over. Some, somebody would fly in with a right hook and just knock the top part of someone's head. Off. Yeah, the choreographer was like, "You punch him, and then that's it. Yeah. He dies." Yeah, I mean that. That's funny that you mentioned that though, because it's actually not even listed as a martial arts movie at all. It's actually listed as an action comedy horror. Yeah, that doesn't <laughs> surprise me at all. Like, you're not going to see any Bruce Lee antics here. You're not going to see like any amazing things like you'd see in the Raid, for example, mm. or. Uh, yeah, no, it's 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 not a kung fu movie, really. The they, the couple of fights that last more than thirty seconds aren't that impressive. And so, do we think that the movie was originally made as a comedy, or do you think it was some of the elements contributed after the fact that made this a comedy? I think if if definitely it exists as a manga and an anime before this, it's probably just over the top, crazy and gory. It's probably not comedic, but when it translates into a live action early 90s effects movie and mm. becomes comedic especially with the voiceover so i think at first it probably started off somewhat serious and then as it progressed into a live action movie it just kind of got funny yeah i 100 percent agree i feel like maybe if you tried to make this a live action movie now it probably would have less of a comedic bent but based on what they were working with in 1991 and i'm pretty sure this is probably a shoestring budget movie oh absolutely um, yeah, it, it just comes off as very campy and funny, um, which isn't a bad thing because I mean I've never heard anyone talk about the comic books or the um, or the anime, but everyone like this is a cult <laughs> classic live action movie. Everyone just loves this movie. Like that's into B movies. I really want to check out the anime now because I bet I can picture every scene in the movie just animated. <laughs> I've I've seen it. It's it's not as exciting as you would expect it to be. Oh. Yeah, it's it's kind of a disappointment compared oh, to the yeah. live action movie. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the comic book is good. I don't know. Fine. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> so, we've obviously this movie has taken some risks in uh, in some of its gore and action. Do you think this was like a mainstream movie in its intent or No. Like, well, I mean, no. you guys were just saying like shoestring budget, but like do you think it was meant to hit like a cult following like right from the beginning? Like was it like a, a niche thing? I don't know. It was like it was competently made and it looked like there was money against it. So it wasn't so bad that it was just made for the sake of being made. It looked like there was money behind it. and Right. I can't, um, I can't put my finger on it. Well, I, I think one of the things with this movie is it was released in Hong Kong, but it received the Hong Kong equivalent of what I guess would be like an NC-17 or an X rating. Oh, wow, really? So, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and just purely for violence. You oh, know, so that's usually, interesting. You know, like, for example, like here, usually those ratings are, are reserved for, you know, very sexual films. Um, usually not super violent movies. Um, and I think that was the first one that was released in Hong Kong, and it was one of the only movies to be given that rating just for violence. So as a result, it didn't get a lot of... Um, it didn't get a lot of patronage and it didn't make a lot of money. Ah, uh -huh, um, okay. And I was going to say, to tie into the risks, you know, it's very risky to release a movie like that in almost any market. Um, so obviously they were going for what they wanted to make and they kind of went all out on it. And I think if they had pulled back from what they were trying to do, it wouldn't have been nearly as fun of a movie as it was. Definitely <laughs> If they recut it to make it into most theaters, it probably we probably wouldn't be talking about it right now. It would just be another kind of bad kung fu movie. It'd be very safe, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. I had no idea. 
Fantastic. So I think we can successfully <laughs> move on to our favorite parts. I know we've, we've, been, we've been highlighting all of our favorite uh, parts of the movie as we talk about them, but is there anything that stands out? Oh my God, uh, where, just in do, general? Like, where do we begin? <laughs> something that you're just going to walk away with forever. Um... You go first. Me? I'm still trying to think. I've got, I've got five. There's like I know there's so many scenes in my head just like floating around that I, I are just about this movie perfect. And I just smile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely a hyper gore part. I'm either gonna give it to the fat guy in the shower who fell in the ragu, <laughs> <laughs> throat punching Elvis. Okay. Yeah. 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 And the the final boss. Final boss. Final boss. Excellent. Final boss fight. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. The transformation up to the head head in the meat soup. <laughs> meat soup. <laughs> I was <laughs> I was gonna say. I mean, the first time I saw this movie, um, I was twelve years old, and my now brother in law <laughs> brought it over to our our house. Oh, um, that explains a lot. Yeah, I know, right? He had it on this the shitty VHS. We popped it in. We watched it. I was like, "This is the best movie I've ever seen." Because <laughs> you know, I'm twelve. I love Mortal Kombat. I still love Mortal Kombat. Um, and the most memorable thing to me, like I even have like vivid memories of like the first time I saw this movie, he's shoving the ogre like beast man warden into the meat grinder, and there's just <laughs> and there's just piles of meat flowing out. Of it. <laughs> I loved that little detail. Too, yeah, they're just like yeah, make the meat flow. Yeah, yeah. they didn't have to do so that. It's much such meat. It's such a Peter Jackson touch on that. Like oh. just the cherry on the top of that blood soup. <laughs> like, <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, one of my one of the parts that's going to stick with me, and it's and it's really small. It happens in the beginning. Is that guy who's just uh, he, he has like this toy, the toy train, the wooden train that gets <laughs> broken Jimmy over Stewart. his head. That yeah, was Jimmy, yeah Jimmy Stewart, Stewart. <laughs> just train. begging and pleading every moment up until he was just <laughs> brutally murdered at some point. <laughs> and that was Good. just like oh god, like <laughs> so obvious. I loved it. The old man with the toy train. <laughs> no. <laughs> And he was he was this movie's uh, excuses guy. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is something that we've noticed as a byline in almost all the movies we've watched. There's always a guy making excuses. Yeah, always. <laughs> it's, it's, it's either he's got his laundry to pick up, uh, he's got to walk his dog, he has homework to do. He was Something's sick. Wrong. Yeah, some, some reason why he couldn't help the bad guys. Yes. <laughs> and he's just begging for whatever it is, usually his life. But in this case, he was begging that he could be released on parole when he was not. I thought he was begging for his train back. <laughs> at he first. was begging for his train. At first, he smacked in his stupid old head, <laughs> and then he got turned into a mummy. <laughs> <laughs> he was. He was a mummy. That's right. Oh, that poor old mummy. Well, he wanted to go home to his pyramid, but all the goons ruined it for him. <laughs> yeah, Vulcan <Bulk and> skull. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, whatever happened to that the the boss who got his face impaled on the on the. The board with nails. Um, oh, he was um, he was killed in the showers. Yeah. yeah. After the guy filled with ragu got his stomach punched in. That's right. He, uh, <laughs> Ricky O punched a hole in his torso, too. Oh, he got torso punched? <laughs> yeah, he got torso punched. Because a few of the characters got up from that. <laughs> I couldn't tell if that was a fatal blow or not. That was a fatal blow, yes. He was killed by that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brittany, favorite part? Oh, my God. My head is just swimming with imagery. <laughs> I know it's tough to like pick something. Um, I like the guy something. who got his mouth ripped off. <laughs> his face skin was just straight up Ooh. ripped off. Oh, the, uh, wait, uh, there were multiple people this happened to. The least player. The one. Okay, him. All right. No, not him. Oh, not him. Tarzan. <laughs> Yes, I think because I, th I think Ricky O was the one to do yes. the ripping. Yeah, like yeah, just a straight like uppercut, like just knocks his face off. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, that was pretty fantastic. Um, oh my god, the guy who got like kicked and then he flipped over backwards and then Ricky just punched him in the face and he died. <laughs> that one was looking oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like an X-ray of his skull getting oh, punched. Yes, that was. Yeah, that was. Oh excellent. yeah, that was a nice. That was touch. really like cool. That. Yeah, that's, only did that's, that once, right? That was it. That yeah. was artfully done. Right. <laughs> well, that was like straight once. out of like a Sonny Chiba movie. Fucking awesome. I love it. Like that was perfectly done. <laughs> it was really like just excellent. Done. Like Quentin Tarantino just masturbates every night to that. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Quentin has seen that movie. I have to assume he has. Yeah, Th that seems Something like that we really need to address is the uh, the Ward's <laughs> son. <laughs> <laughs> that little Humpty Dumpty looking motherfucker. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. This kid looks like fucking Tweedledee. <laughs> and he just eats candy 24 7. Like, like licorice. He's like a giant push pop, fucking cotton candy out oh of nowhere. He's <laughs> and then there's a scene with him in the kitchen wearing like striped pajamas with like. A <laughs> 
<laughs> with like a sleeping hat and he's eating off literally six plates at once there's like a plate of beans a plate of meat and then his dad takes it away and he cries <laughs> he's oh. so he sad to, and he had to have been played by like a 28 30 year old guy yeah just like a stubby fat guy like. looks like kim jong-un <laughs> yeah he didn't look like a child at all <laughs> but uh, yeah, his Scrooge jammies were just <laughs> <laughs> with his little nightcap. <laughs> he would just pop up every once in a while, dressed like a child, eating candy, and <laughs> say something obnoxious. <laughs> Kill him! Kill oh him! My God. <laughs> oh, what an awful character! Perfect. <laughs> so, Everyone in this movie so, is awful. so perfect. <laughs> Just that kid being alive is one of my favorite parts of this movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's one of the few survivors out of the main characters. Just that they included him? Just that he was there. Well, I thought he was the warden at first. <laughs> That's right. I thought it was like a gag thing. Like, the scary guy gets out first. Oh, he must be the warden. And then this little chubby cherub jumps out of the back seat like Ew. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's the warden <laughs> no I was wrong. oh I wish the movie was like that now <laughs> I know that it's would have been a way different movie it's, it's already a fucking cartoon <laughs> uh, is there anything else we need to address before we uh, completely move on here any other favorite parts we want to talk about um, I liked the end when he just punched a hole in the prison wall and everyone, oh my God. everyone yes. escaped. I think I suggested it at the half an hour mark. Yeah. That wall yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, right. let <laughs> everyone be free. You can already punch through tombstones all night with your uncle. That's true. Yeah, the flashback to the uncle tombstone punch. Just give that wall an elbow. That's, that's nothing. <laughs> yeah. It really exploded into a thousand pieces. Yeah. It was the biggest is. doorway ever. <laughs> And you, 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 like we said, you never get a sense that those men were in prison for wrong reasons. I know. <laughs> he's in there for manslaughter. That's a pretty legit reason. Yeah, he like jail. punched a dent in that guy's head. Yeah, that's true. But didn't he like kidnap his girlfriend or something? Yeah, I don't he know. had it coming definitely. <laughs> still manslaughter. Yeah, Ricky it's, still yeah. killed a man cold blood in the middle of the street. By, <laughs> true. By <laughs> skull punch. He did via skull punch. <laughs> that guy had like a crater, a gushing crater in his head. Do you feel like that fact that he was superhuman was kind of glazed over? Definitely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he just like was meditating and then like remembered when he was talking to his uncle and he was like, "Hey, do you still have those superhuman strength?" Yeah. Oh yeah. And he was yeah, like, "Yeah, I'm wicked strong now." <laughs> and then like that's the only time they ever mentioned. <laughs> Ricky O, I remember you when you were seven and eight years old. <laughs> <laughs> only those two years. <laughs> Just for the couple. The rest of your life, you were a stranger to he's me. A, he's, a, yeah, he's a strange. He's a step uncle. <laughs> he only came into the picture at seven. <laughs> and eight. <laughs> and eight. And eight. He spent the rest of uh, his formative years just looking at cameras and laughing. <laughs> mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, and when Ricky's begging him. To like, <laughs> to like teach him face to face with a cack. Yeah, he gets on his knees to beg his uncle oh to teach him how to God. fight, and he's literally talking at his dick. Oh my God, <laughs> he's like, why? please, uncle, staring his dick dead in the eye. <laughs> dead then, in. The and then he just dick. starts laughing about it. He's just, ah, 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 ah. I was half expecting a freeze frame and just sitcom credits. <laughs> 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 So many the story of Riccio was filmed in front of a live audience. <laughs> so many amazing things. It wasn't my favorite part, but that lady jumping out of the sewer <laughs> vent and kicking the dog in half. <laughs> oh, my God. Because <laughs> I literally, like, two seconds before, I was like, hey, a cute dog. Slam. Oh, my God. That was another one I was like, don't, oh tell, no. don't tell Dennis what happens. Don't tell Dennis what happens. <laughs> oh, she kicked the shit out of the dog. <laughs> she literally scissor kicked it in half, and, like, half of its stumpy, bloody body flew across the prison. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that poor baby. Oh. Poor <laughs> guy. Well, that's it. I got nothing. Oh, there's just too much to. There's too much about this movie to even keep track of. Yeah, it could literally go on forever. Yeah, just. I was like we were saying, like I wish this movie was five hours long. Like I would just keep watching this. <laughs> All right, so let's rate this thing. I mean, we've been ta talking nothing but good about it. Fuck yeah. <laughs> That's it. Ah. That's that's my rating. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. I mean, We're all giving it a fuck. Fuck yeah. It a fuck. All right. No, it's a fuck. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah.
Everyone should watch this. This was great. Yeah, it's a super fun movie. It doesn't take itself seriously at all, from what I can tell from the English dub. No, no, no way. It's gory, but it won't make you squeamish, really. Like, even for as much as eyeball torture there was, you... <laughs> I think the only yep. squeamish part was the razors in the mouth for me. Yeah, that was pretty uh, good. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. yeah. Exploding heads, exploding eyeballs, eyeballs flying out. It's oh, so exaggerated. Oh, uh, bad the... dummy drop from a rooftop. <laughs> oh my god, we didn't talk uh, about that. Oh my god, that's oh. right. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this earth. <laughs> <laughs> Floating to uh, my death. A, a, a repairman dummy drop, as uh, yeah, <laughs> as we were putting it. Oh, um. the stiffest body. <laughs> <laughs> so a fuck yeah fucking sweep for Riccio, the story of Ricky. Uh, anything else? Any last? Uh, Last thoughts? Last thoughts. All I have to say is, you bastards! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's a bastard. Yep. Yeah, no, this is... Beautiful. I can see why you guys talk about it so much. Yeah, this, <laughs> this movie just makes me so happy. Like, I just smile when I think about this movie. If if you're into, if you like Peter Jackson movies, you like horror movies, just super gory movies, kung fu movies, dark comedies. Yeah, I typically don't like kung fu movies mm-hmm. or movies with martial arts in them, per se. See, that's good thing I, this doesn't have any. That's what I was <laughs> so good thing this doesn't have that. <laughs> I was expecting something along the lines of like the raid or mm. like b- high quality choreography and right, like but still hyper violence and sort of like a Mortal Kombat ish kind of movie. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Well, all right, you've been listening to Second Class Cinema today. We watched Riccio, and you can find that on DVD where we watched it, and you can also watch it on YouTube if you so desire. For more information, visit our Facebook at www.facebook.com slash secondclasscinema or email us at secondclasscinema at gmail.com if you have any movies you'd like us to watch and discuss. Thank you for listening. Listen up, you asshole. First, eat shit. And then lick our shoes clean. You got that? And, uh, hey, what do you want? And then I cut you up and give your pieces to the dog. Andrew, are you serious? Good night, everybody.